In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a tolerance stack up with a simple assembly using the vector method. So in the previous video, I talked about how to calculate inner and outer boundaries, and these can be used to figure out if two parts will fit together. But what I'm going to show you here is how to figure out uh, the shift between the parts. So you want to know, you know something specific when the parts are misaligned. Uh, inner and outer boundary calculation or a boundary analysis won't give you that. So I'm going to put a CAD image of what I'm talking about on the screen right here. Um, and I'll go back to my scribbles on the board in a minute. So essentially you have a part with a hole in it, and then you have a part with a post. And what we want to know is how far the stick out is of the part with a hole in it over the part with the post. So on the board, it's going to be this right here. And I'll go ahead and put the CAD image up on there as well. So that's a specific requirement. So let's just make something up. You know, this is just for uh, demonstration purposes, but say these two parts get glued together and then they have to fit within another part. So these two parts get glued together and then they need to fit within something. So we want to control this gap. That would be one reason for looking into this. Now, say we got like a dumb robot that glues them together and it's not always that accurate. So we want to make sure at worst case, the part can't stick out too much. Now, one of the toughest things about doing a tolerance analysis is trying to figure out what the requirements are, what you're actually looking for. So I've kind of, not arbitrarily, but I've just chosen this gap to look into. We could just as easily shift the part the other way to look for a different gap. Now, in this analysis, I'm doing two dimensions. So on the, the drawings I have on the board here, I only put the dimensions going left and right. The ones going up and down, we're not worried about this because we're only concerned with how far we're moving this way. It'd be a separate analysis to figure out how far we shift up. So what we have going on here, the part with a hole in it, overall length, three inches plus or minus 20 thousandths. We've got a position tolerance on the hole to A, B, and C. On the part with the post, same idea. Basic dimension comes from our datum feature. In this case, they're both datum C. Uh, I missed that one up there. We got a basic dimension coming from there and a position tolerance for the post. Now, what matters here is that the datums are uh, the same, right? So datum A here is gonna be a touching datum A here, and we're all measuring from the same place. So what we do is I, I drew up here what's gonna happen when we shift the parts. We're gonna have one point of contact with the post and the edge of the hole here, and that's what keeps it from moving further, and we're gonna investigate this gap. Now, you might wonder, well, couldn't I just measure this in CAD, right? You could just take this surface and this surface, you could uh, move it over in assembly and just measure. That's just gonna give you the nominal number, right? That's not the worst case. You've gotta take into account all of this. Now, if you just do a boundary analysis, so you compare the outer boundary of this hole to the inner boundary of this post, right? You'll get close, right? It'll shift over and it'll give you a number, but that doesn't take into account these two dimensions here, which are gonna have an effect on how big that gap is. So we do need the vector stack up. Now, the first step for the vector stack up is to establish a loop. So we've got our gap here going left and right. We're gonna start from the left and we're gonna work our way to the right side of the gap. Now the rule is you have to follow dimensions. You can't jump a gap because in just a minute, we're going to you know, stack this all up and all the numbers have to be connected to each other to make any sense. So what we'll do here is I wanna go from the left side of this gap and the only place I can go is over here, right? So it'll get a, hopefully not too confusing, but I'm gonna go from here to the actual parts. So this corresponds with this right here. The only way to go anywhere is with this three inches plus or minus 20 thousandths dimension. So that's gonna put us over here. So that's our first vector. And when we put it in the table, we just use that dimension, three inches plus or minus 20 thousandths. 
I want to mention real quick before I forget, the datums aren't qualified here. I and mean, this is kind of an incomplete drawing, but even if we did qualify them, they wouldn't uh, count toward the stack up, right? So if, say I had a perpendicularity on datum C, that wouldn't matter for the stack up because the overall outer boundary is controlled by this plus or minus dimension. A perpendicularity would just refine that. Okay, so that's why I left them out. They don't really matter for here. Okay, so one, how do we go anywhere else? We wanna to try to get back to the right side, right? So we're over here. The only place we can go is to the center of the post. So this blue line is the center of the post. This red center line is the center of the hole. We're at the center of the post. The only place we can go now, because we want to go to where the parts touch, we're gonna take half of this hole, okay? So in a minute, I'll show you, we're gonna get the vector for this and then cut it in half for a half vector. So that's our third vector. Now I'm gonna switch colors. Now, since these two parts touch right here, we can go from one part to the other. So we're at this edge here, that's gonna to correspond to this edge of this hole, and we're gonna take half of this. So number four, it's going to go from the edge of the hole to the center of the hole. Now, we can't get to this side of the part from here. Okay, there's no dimension going there. We've got to go back to the other side of the part. So this 1.5 takes us to the edge of this part, and now we can get back to the right side of the gap. So right now I'll put a CAD image of this. I know it's a little tricky to see with uh, all color coded and everything. And if you want a second to look at it, you can just pause the video. So here's the CAD image of the exact same thing I just drew here. So we've got all this. Now the next step, we wanna stack everything up and then we're gonna calculate our vectors. So I'm gonna go to this first vector at this point, I'll go ahead and give them signs. Now, there's more than one way to do this, okay? So you could use signs or sensitivity, you know, different, there's a bunch of different softwares out there that'll do this for you. I'm doing this all by hand on the whiteboard, so I'm gonna do the, the way that it requires the re least writing. But everywhere should get you to the same answer in the end. All right, so one, it's going uh, right to left, so that's gonna be negative. Anything going right to left is negative. Anything left to right is positive. So one is negative. Two is gonna be positive because we're coming back. Three, negative. Uh, four, positive. Five, negative. Six, positive. We're gonna end up with a positive number because there's always gonna be a gap here. Okay, so we're gonna end up summing these, but first we've gotta figure out the vector for this. We can't just punch in one inch plus or minus 40 thousandths because that does not take into account the geometric tolerance. The geometric tolerance is going to change the way the hole uh, reacts, right? Because this position allows it to be angled. So these, if the post is angled here and the hole is angled here, it can move further over. So we have to take that into account. The way we're gonna do that is by converting it into a half vector. Okay, so because we only need half of the hole, we're gonna use the half vector. If we needed the full uh, hole, we would use a full vector. A full vector is just over two instead of over four. So a half vector, the dimension is our inner boundary plus our outer boundary over four, plus or minus our outer boundary minus our inner boundary over four. That's gonna give us a dimension and tolerance that converts all of this into something we can put in a table and calculate. So, So I only have a, a, so much board room, so I'm gonna have to do one of these and then erase it and do the other. 
So our half vector, inner boundary plus outer boundary over four, plus or minus outer boundary minus inner boundary over four. So like I said in the previous video, we went over all of the formulas for uh, calculating your boundaries. This is where you're gonna need them. So for the post, which is an external feature, our outer boundary is the MMC plus the geometric tolerance. So it's gonna be our virtual condition. The inner boundary is the LMC minus the geometric tolerance minus the total size tolerance. I've abbreviated it here, TST. So plus or minus 40 thousandths, our total size tolerance is 80 thousandths. Geometric tolerance is 20 thousandths. We do that because we have the MMC symbol right here. Okay. So we figure all that. Our outer boundary is 1.06 or 1 and 60 thousandths. Inner boundary is 0.86. The outer boundary, like I said, is our virtual condition. The inner boundary is our resultant condition. Now we're going to plug it into our half vector formula. Inner boundary plus outer boundary over 4 plus or minus outer boundary minus inner boundary over four. 1.92 over four plus or minus 20 thousandths over four gives us 0.48 plus or minus 50 thousandths, okay? So what's that doing is taking into account the size and the geometric tolerance and putting it into a symmetric equal number we could punch into an Excel spreadsheet. So if we doubled that, that would be the whole vector, right? So that looks weird because it's a half vector. It's only considering half of the whole. So what I'll do is write this up here and then do this again for the other one. So I simplified this a little bit. So this is an internal feature. We're looking at this whole. So our outer boundary is the LMC plus the geometric tolerance plus the total size tolerance because it's an MMC. As the hole gets larger, you get more tolerance. The inner boundary is the virtual condition, the MMC minus the geometric tolerance. So our outer boundary in this case is 1.34. Our inner boundary is 1.14. Our half vector is 0.62 plus or minus 50 thousandths. It makes sense that both of them are plus or minus 50 thousandths because our geometric tolerance and our size are the same on both. The only difference is the actual dimension. So I'm gonna write this up here. So at this point, we've done all the work. Now I'm just gonna put everything uh, in a stack and then we'll do the arithmetic and figure out what the, the maximum gap is. So I'm gonna put the CAD image up here again so you can see where these numbers are coming from. So our overall dimension, three, is going to the left, so it's negative, plus or minus 20 thousandths. Basic dimension going to the right, so it's positive, no tolerance associated with the basic dimension. This is a first vector we calculated for the post. It's going uh, left, so we do a negative, plus or minus 50 thousandths, and then down the list. I think you see where I'm going with this. When we do the arithmetic, we get 0.14, plus or minus 0.14. So we're looking for the max overhang, the largest gap there can be. We end up with 0.28. Now, if I put that file in a CAD software and just measure it, it tells us the maximum overhang is 0.10, which is misleading. Um, that's why you have to do tolerance stack ups to figure out how everything reacts. Now, let me show you one more thing here. So if we just use our boundaries, we could figure out what the minimum clearance is or the allowance. 
So it's common to do a fit check to see if the two parts will fit together, taking into account their geometric tolerances. So we do our inner boundary of our hole minus the outer boundary of the pin. In that case, we'd get 80 thousandths as the minimum uh, diametral room in between the pin and the hole. Now, our boundaries can also tell us the maximum shift. So how much can one part move? In this case, the outer boundary, so the largest hole, can take into account geometric tolerance, minus the inner boundary, the smallest pin, taking into account geometric tolerance, gives us a diametral room of 0.48. So that's the diameter. If we cut that in half, that's our radial, how far it moves. That's gonna be 0.24. That gets us pretty close to this 0.28. Why is it different? Well, the boundary calculation doesn't take into account the 20 thousandths length here and the 20 thousandths length here. So if you go 20 in this way and 20 back in that way, 40 thousandths, you add that to this 0.24, you get the same thing from our vector calculation. Okay, so it all kind of works together. The boundary calculations are used for fit checks. Vector calculations are used when you need to shift the parts and then check. Um, like I said, a lot of times the most difficult part is figuring out what you're even looking for. Um, but this is how you do it. Like I said before, again, there's software out there. Your company might do a little bit different, but hopefully you get the same answer as me when you plug it into your software. So that's it for this video. I hope you got something out of it. And this is just an intro to a tolerant stack up with two parts. Um, you know, you add more parts, it gets more difficult. So if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below.